Today we're checking out the Ace Magic AM20 Mini PC. Now I'm really excited for this because this is exceptionally small and also has wireless charging. 32 gigs of RAM, multiple three NVMe SSD support, a Wi-Fi card in there, this latest Ryzen processor in there. It's a pretty impressive package for what you're getting. We also have a couple other mini PCs to compare it to. Um, we actually have one that currently runs the Minecraft survival server that I own. And uh, I guess the best thing is to get into it. So first up, let's open it up. So this is the gray AM20 US version with a 512 gigabyte hard drive and 32 gigs of RAM. Now the thing that I will tell you though is this is soldered RAM which has pros and cons. The pros, of course, is that this is substantially faster and will definitely result in better graphical performance when it comes to gaming. However, at the same time, you're gonna be put at a disadvantage if you don't get all the RAM that you need. Obviously, I would have wished for a 64 gig version. Um, I'm a big fan of 64 gigs when it comes to running Minecraft servers. Um, for the average Joe, not so much, so maybe I understand why. Um, but this is how big this is. This is literally the size of my palm. It's a small little package that I'm actually kind of excited to see if I can get into without tearing up these feet too bad. Is there an easy way to get into it? But it has a wireless charger on the top as well. So let's see if I can get into it real quick. Oh, uh, I'm really dumb. It's just a magnetic top. It's nothing crazy. It's literally just a magnetic top. So look at that. That's how easy it is to access the top and change drives out. And look, you have your Wi-Fi adapter and the option for two NVMe drives, or sorry, two additional NVMe drives plus three total, all fitting in the form factor right here. Like that is such a unique little package that this fits three of those suckers. So you can upgrade, throw things in there. But yeah, for a mini PC, that's not bad. So inside of here, you get two screws for mounting, it looks like, an HDMI cord, a power brick, and it looks like you don't get anything to add more drives in there. However, again, this is pretty impressive that they have that charger in the top here as well. So I've been testing this for the last couple of days now. I think I'm up to like almost a week. I've been using this pretty much on and off, and I actually personally like this a whole lot. The two things that are really important with these mini PCs is volume and temperature because obviously with by shrinking a computer down to something that's this size you've got to cool all that um, usually these cpus are supposed to be more power efficient they're optimized uh, etc but that still doesn't mean that you're talking about like a 35 45 watt processor and something that's this small so usually that either comes at the cost of a really loud computer when it starts heating up or it comes at the cost of really high temperatures. Usually for mini PCs, it's both. So just running a GPU test alone, I saw about 82, 83 degree temperatures, and then running the CPU, saw very similar 83 degree temperatures, and then you start putting them together, it starts getting pretty loud, but it did stay below the 85 limit that I consider kind of safe. That's what most processor companies or computer companies kind of target. It does impress me the fact that you're talking about something that's equivalent to a 1050 Ti, as well as like a an eight core Ryzen on a package that's smaller than the palm of your hand. The noise that comes out of this is pretty interesting. Um, I would say that if you're just running something that's GPU or maybe slightly CPU heavy, maybe you're playing a game or something, this stays relatively, I wanna say bearable. The noise doesn't sound super whiny. It sounds pretty decent and it's not it's incredibly loud. I actually give credit to that. That's better than a lot of other mini PCs. It definitely does a pretty solid job. Now, obviously when it starts getting some higher temps, it will start having, of course, the trademark line of mini PCs. Another shout out though, is just that this charger on the top, while I haven't used it a whole bunch, I found that it is a nice, easy to put your phone on position. So it's not anything particularly crazy, but I think it's an added feature to put in something that's this small. So you can take two things off your desk. You can take the charger, your wireless charger off your desk, 
and your PC off your desk and get something that's like just as small. In Cinebench R23, I got around 1,500 in terms of raw CPU performance, which is actually really solid considering that, again, this is such a small mini computer. Um, it is, of course, going to be equivalent to like an 11 series, 11,700G, and then multi-core, of course, is going to be, you know, much higher. The main thing, the main appeal of this, of course, is just having the onboard graphics because, again, um, AMD does a better job in terms of their graphics uh, when it comes to Intel. So you may be getting slightly lower CPU performance, but for a mini PC that's maybe similarly specced, you're talking about something that's got a little bit better in the graphics department that can play games a little bit more competitively. Now, Intel's still been making strides to do that, and they're actually catching up a good bit, but still, I consider this a solid package for something that's like that big. Like, keep in mind, the servers that run, uh, like, my Minecraft servers, those are all back here, and like this big desktop back here is less powerful than this. Another thing that I like to test is just rendering and editing 4K video. I will be trying to edit this video on this. I don't think that's gonna be too crazy. It's got a pretty adequate processor, and to be honest with you, it's all around seems more than solid to do it. It's got enough graphical performance. Again, this is something, I think this is, they're targeting about $500 for this mini PC. Um, I think that's very reasonable given that all you're getting. Like this is going to be hard to beat in terms of building a computer on your own. So another thing that I like to use these mini PCs for is to actually host Minecraft servers. Now this one of course has a better graphics, but it also has a really nice processor and it is not necessarily something I would consider for a Minecraft server just because of the limited RAM upgradability, which we'll talk about later on. But for the most part, it can do it. Um, this is much more targeted towards your regular average consumer um, and not more of a server. For example, if you were to get something like a mini PC that has the upgradability, say for example, the Geekum AS6 here, that has like, of course, upgradability. You can put more, you have RAM slots in there, you can put SODIMs in there. However, if you compare the sizes of the sucker, you're looking at, of course, you know, if I can pull this over here, you're looking at something that's like all around substantially smaller. This is more powerful than this, if you take into account that just the lack of RAM. But of course, the major trade-off in this is that you can't really upgrade a whole lot when it comes to the RAM. One of the strategies I think manufacturers should adopt is including some kind of uh, hybrid, as in like they have some RAM that's soldered on and they include a RAM slot that's maybe uh, there for later upgrades. Now I will say fitting three NVMe SSDs in here as well and having that ability to be upgraded is phenomenal. You have the ability to upgrade your Wi-Fi adapter. And I really think that like the trade-off of course is, you know, do you want to upgrade more storage or do you want to upgrade more RAM later on? And I think the storage is probably the safer bet as much as I personally would like to have the ability to upgrade the RAM, and I think maybe people would as well, we've been stuck at about 16 gigabytes of RAM being the, uh, I want to say, name stay normal for the last like 10 years. And I think that 16 gigs, while we have some games that are starting to creep past that, I really think that like this is more than adequate given the spec count. I think 16 gigs is, if you're getting this for just like a little gaming PC, maybe you want to you know have a family PC, something that's got a little bit of punch to it. Again, this is pretty solid and also having the ability to upgrade the storage on it is probably what's ultimately gonna matter in that situation. I don't see 16 gigs of RAM becoming magically obsolete in 10, 20 years as well. I would have liked a RAM upgrade slot, maybe something on the bottom, maybe something in here, but then again, this is all packed with coolers and this is pretty packed. Now, when it comes to displays, you only have two slots on the back and I don't think that this is a display port out. I think it's just a standard four gigabit, 40 gigabit uh, connection. I really, really would have wished for maybe another slot, especially with such a powerful graphics card. But then again, you're making the trade-off. So keep in mind, if you're looking for maybe multiple monitors, you're kind of stuck with those two HDMI ports on the back. You have two 2.5 gigabyte LAN ports, which again, we're getting to the point where like, that's really good for servers. And I really do think that like, again, this would be great for video editing, have one go to your NAS and then have one go to the internet. You also have four USBs on here as well, and then that 40 gigabyte front USB-C port, um, headphone jack, and then the power button there. Obviously, you also had that wireless charger that we talked about earlier. So for our benchmarking day, I'm gonna focus on Minecraft and Fortnite. These are both games that I think is relatively solid. Also, we're gonna be running this in 1080p, and I think that this way, this is kind of like the average, I wanna say target audience for what's gonna be looking at getting this. 
Obviously you can have better monitors, you can have higher end stuff, sure. I ended up seeing around, I think like 70 up to 90 frames per second in the lobby. Uh, and then playing games, I saw around 60, all the way dropping down to like 40 um, with high settings. I used basically what it set. Now, obviously you can drop that down. Um, and again, we're playing at 1080p, so 1080p high settings. Um, saw in games around 60 to 70 FPS. For Minecraft, it depends because I have a difficult benchmark that not really anything does good on. Basically, I have a really old survival server that everyone's built on for like 10 years. Nothing really passes it. Uh, I think that's got like 30 FPS, I think 35, 40 FPS at spawn, which is like the, the griller. Um, and nothing really does good at it. So this is, of course, I'm not surprised there. But you can easily get up to a couple thousand FPS if you drop all your settings down. Again, Minecraft is not a terribly complex game. However, they've actually made major strides in the last update to include a lot of graphics performance in the stock vanilla Minecraft, which actually I applaud. And it actually takes advantage of the graphics in these mini PCs and in all computers uh, quite well. So I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the review of this mini PC. Check out the channel for other cool tech-related reviews. And uh, hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.